ghost tracks. I've mentioned this phenomenon earlier in my Footprints at White Sands in New Mexico video that I posted last October, in October 2021. Well, if you forgot or this is the first time that you're watching me, I'll explain. Ghost tracks are tracks that appear very suddenly when the conditions are perfectly moist for them to show up. And once conditions change and it becomes either more dry or too wet, these tracks will once again disappear. So ghost tracks, they only appear under certain perfect conditions. This was actually the case with the footprints at White Sands in New Mexico in the Tularosa Basin. And now another case of ghost tracks are discovered in the United States, this time in Utah. So my name is Kaylee and I'm going to tell you everything that I could find out about the new discovered human footprints in Utah. So to start this particular video, I would first like to mention how I first got word of this new discovery as it actually wasn't from the papers. So I'm a member of the Snake Bros uh, Discord community and in the anthropology chat on July 21st, two TikTok videos were posted by members from a person named Elizabeth, who was the creator behind the TikTok account Astralopithish. She publicly announced that there had been a game-changing discovery made on the salt flats of the Air Force's Utah testing and training range. In that area, she made use of hashtags like Ice Age, Breaking News, Discovery, Archaeology, Science, Humanity and Archaeology on TikTok. So yeah, judging by um, these hashtags, I think she really wanted those videos to be found. It's really simple as that, although she did mention in the second TikTok that she didn't want to cross the Air Force and that she didn't want to actually reveal anything. But she did mention the location and the fact that there was a new discovery. So yeah, <laughs> she wanted to be found. And of course, as I could expect from the people frequenting the Snake Bros Discord community, the people there try to uncover as much as possible. What else do you expect from people who are interested in history? So in 2016, a paper had come out about 12,000 year old tobacco seeds being found on the same salt flats in nearly the same area. Later on that same day, Elizabeth, or Astralopithish, uh, deleted her two videos about this new discovery without any explanation or anything that was heard from her until the 25th of July, which was a whole four days later. Apparently, people were asking her about her health, her well-being, how there was no announcement on Friday the 22nd when she had said that there would be, as it probably was delayed because she opened her mouth, which isn't really what you're supposed to do. I would like to mention that in the scientific community, whether that's archaeology or anthropology or even astronomy, you never ever ever mention anything about a new discovery until you've gone through all the proper channels. You've taken the proper steps, it's peer-reviewed, studied and published then you can open your mouth. I know this because my sister was publishing something and I had to zip it for how long? I think from like uh, May 2021 until what? What was it? February? January, February 2022? Nearly a year. Eventually on the 26th of July, the news broke officially about this new discovery in Utah. The footprints that are the subject of today's video. But yeah, that's how I found out about it. And um, yeah, keep your mouth shut until it's okay to talk. It's time to look at the location where this discovery was made. The Hill Air Force Base is located in the northwest of Utah in County Davis. And the Utah Test and Training Range is located, again, in the northwest of the state of Utah and in eastern Nevada in the United States of America. This area is actually very well known as the Great Salt Lake Desert. And as the name already points out, this area used to be a large lake that is now dry. 
The area receives less than 200 millimeters, which equates to approximately 8 inches of precipitation annually. That's not much. Once the rain evaporates, the salt crust that covers the desert reforms again, and this happens annually as well. It's nice to already know what's going to happen in a year, in a place. This year, when Urban and Darren Duke of the Far Western Anthropological Research Group were driving to an archaeological site at Utah's testing and training range, they spotted what seemed to have been ghost tracks. So they immediately stopped the vehicle to take a closer look. And without a doubt, Urban knew what he was looking at. Human footprints similar to those that he studied at White Sands National Park in New Mexico that, like I mentioned earlier, I covered in the video last October. Again, the thumbnail. It's a good video, actually. It's not long, but it gives you everything that you want to know and some background information on all of it. So the next day they returned to the site and they started to document the prints. That's what you usually do. You study it. They started conducting a ground-penetrating radar survey on one of the two visible trackways. This method has actually been refined since Urban was imaging the footprints at White Sands in New Mexico, which came in pretty handy during this particular research. Like, you've done this not even a year ago and you can do it again and now you can perfect it even more. Urban said that just like at White Sands, where the visible ghost tracks were only a small part of the story, the radar detected many more invisible prints here in the salt flats of Utah. So Duke excavated some of the prints. He confirmed that they were left by people walking bare feet and that they were previously unseen. Which is why it's a new discovery, even though they've been there all this time. So a total of 88 footprints have been discovered here at this location. They belong to adults and children, and these prints could actually offer us quite a bit more insight into the lives of the people living in the Pleistocene in this part of the world. So based on the excavations of numerous of these footprints, evidence have been found that adults were walking around with children in the age range of 5 to 12 years. What seemed to have happened is that they were walking in shallow water when they were walking there at the time, where the sand rapidly filled in the left behind prints, just like you would see happen on a beach, for instance. But the main difference between a beach and what normally happens with the prints being filled in and this exact location was that there was a layer of mud beneath the sand that actually kept the prints intact after they had been filled in. So this part of the United States hasn't seen wetland conditions for at least over 10,000 years that could have produced the trails of the footprints in this remote area of the Great Salt Lake Desert. Therefore, we already know that the prints are unable to be any younger than 10,000 years. But the prints are more likely more than 12,000 years old as the conditions before 12,000 years ago would enable these prints to be left behind a lot easier. As you can imagine, additional research is being conducted to confirm the new discovery and to figure out more. Duke is actually one of the researchers that discovered two open-air hearth sites and at one of these hearth sites he discovered the earliest tobacco use dating back to approximately 12,000 years ago, which is in the same area of the Great Salt Lake Desert, and it's actually just half a mile away from this latest discovery. And the people in the Snake Bros um, Discord that found this, good job, because he's actually affiliated with that. So after the discovery at White Sands, New Mexico, uh, last October, it was actually questioned if more sites like it could exist in the United States or anywhere else in the world, and if ground-penetrating radar could effectively image the footprints at other locations than White Sands, as it was a very new application of this technology. And it seems like the answer to both these questions is without a doubt yes. 
which is great news because oh my god i want to learn more about like the people leaving behind these footprints and i want to find more footprints wherever anywhere in the world of course the new discovery in utah isn't as old and as big and therefore as grand as the discovery at white sands but it does help us in understanding more about the people living in the pleistocene and we should understand more about the people living in the pleistocene because i mean the last ice age wasn't very kind to us and you know, <laughs> a lot happened. The researchers also believe that there is more to be found in the area, and I personally feel like they are absolutely right. I cannot imagine nothing else to be found there at all, so um, it's just waiting for them to find something else. We need to investigate the areas of the dried up lakes in the United States, as I personally feel like a lot more of these sites are hidden in plain sight. But, you know, only time will tell, and until then, we will have to sit on the edges of our seats and hope that they discover more. So yeah, this was the new footprints that have been discovered in Utah. These are not the dinosaur prints in Utah, that's a whole other story with, like, them being damaged and no one really saying sorry. That was a whole thing a while ago. I might make a video on that one day. But that wasn't the subject of today's video. We've already covered that and you've got all the information that I could find. So yeah, if you enjoyed watching, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos and click that bell icon if you want to be notified whenever I upload. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, then click the card in the upper right corner or click a link in the description down below or click a video in the end card. The end card is actually set to best for viewers, so YouTube caters to what it is that you want to watch. And I would like to say a massive, massive thank you to all my patrons and my channel members. I'm eternally grateful for all your support. You are making my life a, a bit easier and I'm really happy that you've decided to support me. If you are considering supporting me, then you can maybe become a patron or a channel member. Feel free. And yeah, this was the end of the video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.